General Mills. Chairman Durbin, uh, Vice Chairman Cochran, Vice Chairwoman Mikowski, distinguished members of the subcommittee, it's my honor to appear before you today uh, to speak about your Marine Corps Reserve. Mr. Chairman, we welcome your leadership, and I'm very grateful for your support and the subcommittee's continued support of the Marine Corps Reserve and its associated programs, programs that help us sustain ourselves as a ready, relevant, and responsive component of the Marine Corps total force. With me today is Force Sergeant Major Anthony A. Spadaro. Sergeant Major Spadaro's engaged leadership with our Reserve enlisted Marine members, members who collectively for are the strength of the Marine Corps Reserve. His leadership is truly inspiring. Since taking command last August, I've been uh, deeply impressed by the professionalism, the competence, and the dedication of our magnificent reservists. Like their active duty brothers and sisters, they sacrifice so much of their time and so much of themselves to protect and serve our great nation. The way they balance their family responsibilities, their civilian lives, their schools, their jobs, and their careers, and still stay 100% Marine truly inspires me. Our reservists share the same culture of deployment and expeditionary mindset that has dominated the Marine Corps culture, ethos, and thinking since our services beginning more than two centuries ago. I'm proud to say that since 9-11, almost 63,000 Marines from the Ready Reserve have executed a total of more than 82,000 sets of mobilization orders. A critical enabler for our operational tempo has been the Navy's Bureau of Medicine's continued support of behavioral health through various independently contracted programs. Programs such as the post-deployment health reassessment, the mental health assessments, and the psychological health outreach program have helped our Marines immeasurably. These programs have proven effective in the overall management of identifying those Marines and sailors who need behavioral health assistance, and then have provided an avenue to those service members so they can seek behavioral health assistance. We continue to enjoy a strong demand for affiliation with our units, as seen by our increased accessions from the active component as active component Marines leave the active service. We also enjoy high rates of retention. Our retraining, our inactive duty travel reimbursement, our bonus program, and our incentive programs for reserves have proven to be essential tools in achieving nearly 100% of our authorized end strength in fiscal year 2013. The continued use of these programs are critical enablers for us as we seek to optimally align our inventory to our requirements. In regard to ground equipment readiness, the reserve component continues to carry an historical maintenance requirement that uses a combination of field maintenance capabilities and contracted logistical support maintenance teams. This is an enduring requirement to support field maintenance operations, and the combination of those two programs I spoke about is to help us sustain over 97% ground equipment readiness of our force. The Marine Corps is our nation's crisis response force and will continue to be most ready when our nation is least ready. As part of the Marine Corps Total Force, Marine Corps Forces Reserve is appropriately organized, manned, equipped, and trained to provide forces to augment, reinforce, sustain, and act as a shock absorber to the active components requirements. Again, thank you for your demonstrated support for our reservists, for their families, and for their employers. Chairman Durbin and fellow members, I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. We have a roll call.